So thank you all for joining us today as we are gonna do a deep dive and a very casual conversation in regards to how to organize and meet up with GitLab. I'm Jamie Rochelle, the Evangelism Program Manager, and I work closely with um, John, who is going to um, basically give you a nice tutorial on how to organize a meetup. So John, you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, my name is John Coughlin. I'm on the Community Relations Team at GitLab with Jamie. I started kind of getting involved in tech and startup communities in 2012. And since then I've been active in a number of different meetup groups. Uh, and over the last three years, I've been organizing the GitLab meetups program. And that program really works with local organizers. They can be GitLab community members, GitLab team members, sometimes GitLab customers, um, and helping them organize groups. And then over the last year, I've also been organizing um, actually, I guess over the first year of the pandemic, I was organizing the GitLab virtual meetup group, and then Jamie has taken over um, that group. And so I've got lots of experience with local meetups, running global meetup programs, organizing virtual meetups. And so Jamie and I were just thinking it might be a good time since we haven't done this in a while to talk to our community about you know, our meetups program and what makes, you know, meetups work. Um, but since it's a small crowd, you know, I'm happy to really kind of focus on people's questions and that way we can be really efficient with people's time. Um, so if anybody has, I guess one thing that would be helpful to me, actually, since it's like a smaller crowd, would maybe be if everybody could just go around and do a quick introduction to kind of who they are and what brought them here today. And so Suze was first here. So I'm going to ask Suze to go and then you can kind of pick Simon or, or Conan to follow you. Hey, no worries. Hi, my name's Suze. I'm based in London, England, as you can probably tell from the accent. Um, I run Ladies of Code London, which is a developer community for women and non-binary people in London, um, mostly developers, but also folks that are in tech, but not necessarily coding. Um, and we run all different kinds of events. So we run a weekly co-working event where people can come and do their projects. Uh, we've got a weekly coding session as well. We invite guest speakers on to demystify uh, roles in um, tech. So not necessarily development roles, other things as well. So management, um, product, things like that, data. Um, and what's brought me here is that I'm really interested to know about what it's like to work with a company on delivering meetups, because that is not something we have tried before. So like I said, we've brought speakers in, but we haven't actually partnered with any companies. So I'm quite interested to hear about how you do that at GitLab, um, really. But yeah, I've been organizing events for ages, um, but yeah, never done that whole company partnership piece. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we have a event series that Jamie started called Beyond Code. Um, and it seems like it's similar in some ways, although not as extensive yet, but um, it's focused on um, highlighting different ways that, you know, people can contribute to GitLab beyond code. So, you know, kind of in tech, but not necessarily development roles. Um, so it seems like there's some synergy there. Yeah, I'm going to ping over to Conan, I think, if Conan's there. Conan, can you hear me? No, maybe Bill then. Hi, how are you? We just doing introductions? Yeah. Yeah, introductions and what uh, brought you here? Sure. So I work, uh, my name's Bill Danagelis. I'm in Northern California. I work for a uh, startup called SciCode. We, we help companies really try to help secure, monitor, um, you know, and govern the software development lifecycle. So everything from um, really dev to, to production. Um, so I'm just looking, you know, and we, we really try to protect those repos. So, you know, it doesn't matter which Git it is, but, you know, that's why I'm here, just trying to understand what the bigger um, group looks like and you know are there opportunities to work with folks to um, you know share the message or work collaboratively collaboratively together so cool thanks bill how do you spell psycode c-y-c-o-d-e 
Got it. We're looking for like secrets, uh, source code leakage, um, you know, supply chain attacks, right? Code tampering, that sort of stuff. So we're helping people uh, look farther up the software development life cycle. There's been SaaS and DAS solutions for a long time and they do a really good job. We're not in that space, um, but that's kind of looking at what comes out of the, you know, what's in the pipeline versus, you know, kind of what's of the pipeline. Simon, you want to go next? Yeah. Hi. Um, I am the uh, dev role manager at what used to be called Redis Labs and is now just Redis. Um, so we have an open source database product and a commercial product. And um, I try and work with community around that, mostly in Discord, but also through conference speaking. And um, we tried like city based meetups where it was our meetup. And then we've kind of tried guesting at other people's meetups. So I guess I sort of am looking at the opposite perspective to Sue's is like, how do I as representing a company sort of help somebody's meet up without it being seen to be this like horrific marketing takeover shill thing, which I don't want it to be and it shouldn't have to be. And I'm in Nottingham, England. All right, well, Conan, do you want to hey. share with us? Hey, sorry. Um... Well, I'm a software developer, and I was in a previous meetup in uh, GitLab meetup uh, in Mexico a couple of years ago. Um, I'm just a software developer, interesting on all uh, related with GitLab, you know, uh, continuous integration and stuff like that. And um, well, I'm here just to learn about technology, I guess. All right, cool. Um, Okay. Oh, go ahead, Kona. I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought you were done. No, no, that's it. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, well, thanks everyone for being here today. Um, it sounds like uh, there's some interest in particular around kind of GitLab's program. Um, and so I think I'll start, you know, with like an overview of how our program operates. And then if we, you know, it's, it seems like there's a fair bit of knowledge already around kind of, you know, what a meetup is and getting, you know, a group started and, and all of that. And so I think I'll skip um, some of that and just talk through the elements of GitLab's program. So, you know, as kind of Simon alluded to, I think, you know, when done poorly meetups, at least those that are kind of um, organized, you know, by like a large open source project like GitLab can come off um, as a bit of, you know, too much um, marketing. And, you know, I think we've tried to intentionally structure our program to avoid that. And so the way that the program at GitLab is structured is that we have Jamie, who's on our team, who's, you know, the evangelist program manager, and she recruits and supports local meetup organizers. And those are, you know, tend to be members of our community um, in planning, you know, and organizing their groups. So we have written materials, videos, and, you know, kind of um, support system in place. We share that with the local organizer and then Jamie will work collaboratively with them as they go through the you know, group creation and then subsequently the event creation process. We provide financial support for the groups. So we'll cover the cost of the meetup.com um, subscription. And we'll also provide financial support when in-person events are possible to cover the cost of food and drink and send swag. Um, and then we'll work with organizers to connect people with speakers and hosts, but we're not prescriptive in the types of content um, that the groups cover. So we think of things like as, you know, kind of DevOps broadly are really like the topics that we're able to cover, but we, you know, don't require the material to be about GitLab itself. Um, in fact, one of our more active groups lately has been, I think it's called DevOps and Chill or something like that. Um, and we've been, you know, active in supporting that group and organizing events throughout the summer. Um, and, you know, in general, they're just 
folks that are you know interested in DevOps that get together and talk about kind of latest trends. Um, but you know, there's no formal presentation about GitLab, but they're not, they haven't been giving out GitLab swag because it's been virtual. Um, and so it's really, we're just kind of there to help support and encourage um, the organizers of that group to build up their DevOps community. So, you know, I think that structure has worked well for us. If I'm being totally honest, you know, during the pandemic, it's been really hard um, to organize, to, to find organizers who are, you know, have the energy to organize virtual events. I think in the beginning of the pandemic, everyone was pretty excited about the accessibility of those events and the ability to recruit speakers from a global audience and pull a global audience into your events. Um, but I think some of that enthusiasm has waned. Um, one, I think people are just fatigued from living through a pandemic for you know what seems like an eternity. Um, but I also think that there's been you know an increase in kind of the amount of um, events that are competing for people's attention, and some of these bigger events are you know really refined and do a great job of marketing. And so I think those are competing now more with like the local meetups, which in the beginning of the pandemic were maybe a bit more nimble. Um, and we're able to make that transition more quickly. So, um, so that's a little bit about, you know, the GitLab meetup program, you know, from the organizer side, we also have support systems in place for speakers. So if people want to be a speaker um, at a meetup, we have a team of developer, you know, evangelists like Simon's team that's developer relations, but just a slightly different title and uh, our team will work with those speakers to help ensure that the technical details of their talks are accurate if they're you know referring to GitLab or topics that we're familiar with. Um, we'll work to help you know improve the kind of slide design based on our team's experience um, you know presenting at conferences and things uh, and we'll also help them work on the delivery of their talks and the idea is to you know just kind of get those people prepared so that um, they're able to make a great impression on the communities that they're presenting to. Um, we also have things like GitLab slide templates um, and even some, you know, kind of prepared decks and demos for some of our, you know, like more um, intro level type talks. Um, but again, you know, they're really not um, marketing oriented. They tend to be more um, oriented towards helping people up level their skills. So if someone, you know, is a new developer and doesn't know what continuous integration is, um, we have like a talk and a demo that will help people build, you know, their first pipeline in about 40 minutes uh, and leave, you know, understanding the basics of that um, concept and with like an actual, you know, working pipeline in a repo and, uh, uh, attached to their GitLab account. Um, you know, we also do, you know, like kind of pairing of hosts and um, meetup groups when that, that's um, possible. Uh, that hasn't been possible for a long time. Um, and, you know, and for members, we have a global network of meetups and everybody can go on meetuppro.com slash GitLab or about.gitlab.com slash events and find all the local meetups that we're supporting. Um, and we're always happy to help people start a new group in their area if they don't see something locally. So that's kind of the high level view of our program. You know, I think um, for Sue's like, you know, and, and for folks that join late, um, Sue's works with a group called, I hope I get this correct, Ladies Who Code um, in London. And so um, I just wanted to kind of, you know, talk a little bit around, you know, like what our past relationships have been like with similar groups. And so we have had, close relationship in the past with the organization named Rails Girls. That's a global organization um, that's focused on um, Rails, which is a, a language that we use uh, to build GitLab. And so there's been a good kind of relationship between, our, you know, the GitLab team and, and that organization. And we frequently you know, make donations or provide other support to them. Um, but we're, you know, I think our, as a company, we're looking to make a bigger push around our corporate social responsibility and how we engage with organizations um, that are doing great things, you know, especially around um, teaching, you know, software development skills. So I'd, you know, love to hear around about what kind of your group's needs are, Suze, um, and see if there's a fit there. 
Yeah, I don't have any immediate needs that I can think of, but I'm quite interested to know, like, how would we join the programme? Do we do we have to join to to engage with it? You know, what sort of commitment is there on both sides? And um, how do you decide, like, who you want to join? Because presumably you wouldn't take everybody who comes along, right? Because you don't have unlimited amounts of money and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, what we look for is alignment around topic. And I think, you know, may, Jamie, maybe it's a good time for us to review, you know, some of this and make sure that it's up to date. But I think alignment around topic is important. So typically we tend to accept like DevOps related groups. Um, so that's kind of one of the criteria. We also look for groups that are led by uh, organizers that align with GitLab's values. So we have a set of values, the credit values, it stands for collaboration, results, efficiency, diversity, inclusion, and belonging, iteration, and transparency. And so we look for people that are going to, you know, share those values. And in the context of meetups, I think the one that stands out the most is diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and making sure that you know, groups have a code of conduct in place and are promoting diverse voices and ensuring that everyone can participate. Um, so, you know, I think that's an important criteria that we look at. Um, and then, yeah, from like a logistical perspective, you know, the process would be like, you know, go to our meetups page on our site and there's an application button. Um, Basically, it's a start a meetup group that'll take you to a GitLab project where you can open an issue and you'll fill out the details for your group. And then Jamie will do a review. And if there's any question, you know, probably escalate that. And then from there, you know, we'll provide a, a key. It's a basically a unique URL to add your group to our meetup.com pro network. Um, you know, we ask that organizers um, host at least four meetups per year in order to maintain their membership in that group. Although we've gotten a bit lax on that because we know that, you know, people are really facing some tough times right now. Um, and then, you know, we'll do a regular review to make sure that people are following the code of conduct and things like that. I have a question. Um, I, it looks like I got to you guys because I signed up for the um, Bay Area GitLab meetup group. So you guys maybe heard about um, me that way. But uh, um, are, are you guys looking for more groups um, or I mean, I don't I don't not sure that it makes sense for me to try to start something new when there's one here, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So I think. We're not looking for more groups per se. What we're looking for is more active groups. And so if your geography, um, if there's an existing group in your area, and that could be an existing GitLab group or an exi existing DevOps group um, that's gone, you know, become inactive for whatever reason. Um, if it's a GitLab group that's part of our network, we'd love to help you, you know, take a leadership role in that group. Um, and become an organizer. And then, you know, from there, we can help you with kind of all of that support that I mentioned earlier, which, you know, could be recreating the group description and coming up with some new graphics to give the group a fresh look and then, you know, helping you with the communication to the community that you're stepping in as the organizer for that group. Um, and then from there, you know, planning, um, you know, some events. Normally we encourage people to start with, you know, about three events. If you could have four events lined up, you know, that would cover you for a whole year if you did um, meetups on a quarterly basis. But having like just that little cushion to say, okay, we're gonna do these three events and then that can help you get some momentum. Um, that would, that's kind of what that process would look like. Obviously for us, you know, Bay Area is an, um, a location that we'd love to see, you know, get back up and running. And so um, I think we'd be, you know, in that case, like really willing to help um, connect you with members of our community or even get let team members to go um, speak at your events and, and help you build out that calendar. So I think for, you know, those kind of 
groups that are in areas where there's high developer de density, um, I think we'd be, you know, really keen to to work with you to make sure that the group was successful once we revisit it. Okay. Cool. You answer my questions. What well, I'm from a community, and here we there's not any kind of meetup right now, right? You know, and my question maybe is. Um, Mm, well, what uh, are the steps to start with a um, GitLab community or those kind of um, regularity meetups here? Um, I don't know if you have, for example, like uh, predefined uh, topics to, to start with, to, um, uh, to organize uh, meetups related with GitLab. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think there's like a few steps to the process of starting a meetup group. One is like kind of defining your personal goal and what you want to get out of it. Um, because as the organizer, you need to be able to stay motivated um, to keep those groups, um, you know, whatever group you're leading organized. So for some people, it's, you know, building up community. For some people, it's knowledge sharing. For some people, they're looking to kind of build out their resume and expand their skill set. Um, some people are just really passionate about something um, and they want to, you know, help kind of advocate for that thing. Um, so one, you know, the first step is really defining the why. Then the next step yeah, would be yeah. the step, you know, Bill's at, um, you know, and, and other people are at, which is, okay, I'm, I'm interested in getting involved with this community. I want to start you know, leading a group, but, you know, first, let me see, I think my recommendation would be first, why don't you see if there's an existing group already in that, you know, in your area that's discussing that topic that you're really passionate about. Um, the reason why is, you know, migrating people from one group to a new group, you know, is going to create a lot of work when you could just approach the organizers of that, you know, dormant group, or even if it's active, but not as active as you think it could be. Um, you know, I think most organizers would always be happy to have extra help uh, in planning their meetups. And that's actually one of the recommendations we make on our um, meetup checklist is to, you know, form a team if possible, even if it's just two people to share the workload. Um, I think that can make a big difference and really help with the longevity of the groups. Um, yeah, and then, you know, if there is no group in your area that's discussing DevOps or GitLab and you think that it's, you know, a new group is the right decision, um, then you'll start the new group. And then from there, it's about kind of, you know, creating a really great description page with a cool like, kind of header image that catches people's attention. You want to show people that your group is um, something you've invested your time in if, they're, if you're asking them to invest their time. Um, and you really want your description to be like a kind of a pitch on why people should join, not just, um, it shouldn't sound like a Wikipedia entry. Um, you know, I think that adding the code of conduct is an important step. Um, you know, you can either take GitLabs, even if it's not a GitLab related group, you know, our conduct, our code of conduct is free for anyone to use. Um, or you can search Google to find one that kind of better covers the things that you think are important. I'm sure Ladies Who Code has a great code of conduct that you know might be something other people want to use. Um, you know, from there, um, the next step is that regular cadence. So coming up with a regular cadence of both events and in lieu of events, just maintaining communication and letting people know, you know, what's going on. When you know, are you having trouble finding a speaker? Um, and that's why you haven't planned an event in a while, because maybe that will inspire members of your community to, you know, kind of step up and say, hey, I have a talk I've been wanting to do. I'm happy to, to help out. Um, so maintaining that regular cadence of both events and communication. Um, you know, I think the other thing I encourage people to do is not let having a speaker be a blocker. Um, you know, I think the format today is kind of loose. Um, most, you know, meetups fun. People think need to follow a speaker followed by a conversation format. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we have a DevOps and chill group that's just been getting together and they have, you know, unstructured conversations, um, you know, and, and, you know, seeing great engagement there. So, um, you know, I, I think don't let that kind of expectation of needing a speaker be a blocker for you getting your group together. 
Uh, I think a lot of people go to meetups because they want to connect with other people and, and having that opportunity will be enough to bring people together. Um, and then yeah, the other piece is around diversity, inclusion, belonging, making sure that you know, you're bringing in speakers or members that um, are from diverse backgrounds and represent different facets of diversity and so that everybody you know, feels welcome when they're participating. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, what the kind of, you know, your unique situation is Conan, but like, if there is no group in your area, um, the process would be the same as I described to students, open an issue, share the details of that, um, you know, group that you're envisioning. And then from there, Jamie and I can work with you to help get the meetup key and the digital assets and refine the description and really make the group pop. And then um, also line up, you know, those first few events so that when you announce the group, they know, okay, if I'm, you know, investing my time in here, I know that there'll at least be three events over the next six months that I'm gonna be able to participate in. Okay, sounds good. Uh, uh, we're supposed to open that issue in... Yeah, Jamie, can you drop a link to that um, in the chat? Yes, I'll do that now. Thanks. So, um, Pavel, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, well, I actually have a meetup group with you guys already. Oh, that's right. uh, it's just that I never. About. Oh, where are you? Oh yeah, okay. So that's a coding and chill. Coding <laughs> and chill. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, so that's uh, it's not. To be honest, it's not DevOps really oriented. It's just coding people from different sort of coding backgrounds. Uh, and on the last one we had, we uh, we've done. It was like an escape room, but to kind of escape, you had to write some code. Uh, and uh, that was really fun. And we did it in the park. We sat on the benches. Um, so yeah, I don't have really anything to add. <laughs> it's just that, uh, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> and it, uh, I guess you need more, you, you get better at it by time. I'm still not very good at organizing those things, but uh, yeah. So just out of curiosity, do you feel like, how do you feel like GitLab could better support your group um, is there anything that you wish that we were doing that we're not doing right now? No. Well, I guess I could just when you were talking, I was looking at the, my description of the group and I realized it's not, it's, it's like not maybe talking to like different people from different walks of life. Uh, so I might need help to like kind of refine that and make that more inclusive. I don't know. Um, because we, we do are like mostly guys uh, in the group. So maybe we want to, yeah, brought that up somehow. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we'd love to help with that. So let us know. I know you're, we're in touch on issues quite regularly. So we can bring that up on another issue. Yep. Cool, cool. How about you, Simon? I know you had a, a kind of a question that was looking at things a little bit differently than what I might have discussed. Yeah, I guess. So for those who are late, I, I work for the company that is now the company and product Redis. So we have this weird situation of a very large open source product and a, then paid service. So not entirely unlike GitLab. Um, and I come from the uh, DevRel team and I'm kind of interested in uh, how we sort of help meetups without essentially like deculturing them, if you like, or just making it a, this is this, because you know, obviously we have some resources and some people all over the place that can speak out or do things or help in other ways. Uh, but when I've, whenever I've mentioned it works, like, oh, I'm speaking at a local meetup, marketing wants to get hold of it and do stuff. And I'm like, no, not like that. I'm just literally speaking at the local meetup and like, I will name drop something and maybe we can provide pizza and maybe the topic is nothing to do with our product, but uh, yeah, I, think, I was kind of interested in how you, you've struck that balance of kind of like, obviously you have to answer to a business, but equally you don't want to change the things that you go into too much or at all really, except for the better. Yeah, I think that's a, 
a difficult balance to strike. And I think that being on the community relations team at GitLab, it's often like something we need to remind people about like this, like we have different parts of the company that are in charge of marketing. And what we're doing is separate to that. Like we're growing a community. And so that's one of the, that's probably like the most important thing is like making sure that your peers and, you know, the company understand that and understand the value of community that, and, and how it's separate from the value of marketing. Um, so I think that's one important piece. We're actually working on our, as our, team on a certification right now that's going to be available to anybody but you know I really focused on our team members so that they can get certified in the GitLab community and understand the value that our you know community brings to the company how the community fits into our strategy the you know how our programs the community relations programs operate um and just help people level up their knowledge so that it's a little bit more clear, especially when we're onboarding people. Um, I think people that have been around for like a year or two tend to start to understand it, but I think the certification we hope will help people get up to speed more quickly. Um, so that's one way to kind of, you know, like fight that internally. I think, you know, another way to look at it would be like, how can you, give value to the communities that you're part of. So, um, you know, as like the DevRel people for Redis, you know, you can come up with, you know, some really great like introductory talks that are going to bring value to a lot of people. I think for us at GitLab, that tends to be focused on like Git and Git workflows um, and CI. And so we'll focus a lot of our community focused talks on those topics. If we're going to a conference or doing a webinar or something like that, you know, we'll tend to get a little bit deeper, but when we're with community groups, we tend to focus on those higher level talks around like, what is a Git workflow and, you know, what is a branch and a commit and how does all of that work? Um, and then similar with CI, um, you know, we'll have those kind of introductory talks and we, you know, by bringing those out and, and doing them at, you know, AWS user groups or other kind of local DevOps groups, um, we're able to help, you know, a lot of people level up their knowledge. The other way that we kind of use meetups that I really think is great is like promoting community speakers. Um, and so, you know, we have our internal kind of evangelist team and they do things like write blog posts, go do conference talks, come up with these introductory talks and, and do them at meetups, um, speak to media. Um, but then we also have Jamie and our evangelist program that's really focused on creating a platform for people in our community to go out and be evangelists themselves and raise their own profile and do talks and things. Um, and I think that that creating that space where, you know, it's not just your team talking to the community all the time, but you're creating opportunities for the community to talk to each other. Um, I think that really brings a tremendous amount of value and people then get excited because they see, okay, I could go and do a talk at a GitLab meetup. So now I'm gonna get, you know, level up my skills so that I can reach out to Jamie and say, hey, I have this talk I've been wanting to do with it at a virtual meetup. Can, you know, can we work on that together? Yeah, I think we sort of, tried some of these things as well and we're in the early days so we started like a twitch thing periodically where the aim is it's our platform but we don't really speak at it so we pull people from the discord community or something um and then we've also like you said tried doing more generic stuff so for us it will be talking about like what is big o no big o notation which is a you know general interview question or data modeling in NoSQL or something and try and keep the product out of a little out of it a little bit and what kind of results have you seen from that um mix i think it's it's kind of early days and we have this community of there's the open source people and there's people that pay us and then you can get our product from a bunch of other cloud providers you know in all sorts of different so even like getting those people to realize that all of these things are the same underlying thing like i guess you do with the git protocol and the git process um is a thing that we sort of need to do to build a wider community, I think. 
But um, the other way we've been doing it is we have like training courses for the product and we invite people into Discord for that and they stick around. We used to have like products per, sorry, forums per course run. And then at the end of your six week run, it would get flushed and the next run would happen. And that obviously doesn't build community. Whereas an ongoing Discord, people come back and kind of help each other out. And then we notice those people and like, do you want to come speak at things? So early days, but it seems to be working. And Suze and, and Pavel, like what kind of things, you know, Pavel, you already kind of answered this question, but maybe Suze, like what kind of things would you like to see from groups like, you know, organizations like GitLab and Redis, like what kind of, you know, value can we bring to your community? Um, I think definitely anything that can help you level up in your career. So whether it's about becoming more senior or just you know, doing that whole T-shaped thing. So becoming more broad or a bit deeper. So like Simon said, all of that good stuff, um, things that you might come across in your interviews is always good. Um, insight into other roles that you might want to go into. Um, but like you said, John, a lot of it's about networking, isn't it? So just getting to know more people and widening out your network to open up those opportunities for you because it's really hard for people from underrepresented groups to get ahead in tech um so yeah any lending of privilege is always welcome how do you feel about things like co-promotion of events where like maybe we do it you know as an example like we would have an event where it's a you know it led team member and then one of the members of your um ladies who who code or ladies who tech group um you know like are both presenters and then we pro you know, both create meetup, uh, you know, event pages, and um, we're able to kind of cross pollinate our communities that way. Um, have you done things like that before? Um, we have in the past, especially when we've done the physical ones, because we would work with companies to have meetups at their premises. So people would lend out their offices to us, and then we would go there and have our event um, there. So yeah, that has definitely worked quite well. Um, what you do find is though that you tend to get people who aren't really interested in being part of the community. They want to come for that meetup because they want to hear about that company or they want to see that company's office and they're not really that interested in the community. So I think it can be beneficial, but also you do get sort of a lot of one-off people coming to that. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but um, I think on balance definitely helps to have that kind of co-branding. Yeah, um, and I think you need to balance that as well, because if you want to work with other companies, like how does that work? Um, you know, if I'm not a sort of a GitLab, GitLab meetup and I might want to work with other companies, I kind of need to be quite careful that I'm not upsetting any of my, uh, my good friends in tech there at all the, all the companies that want to help out. So um, what are some of the things that you do with your like community that promote kind of re-engagement, keep people coming back? So we, especially in um, COVID, we've done a lot of series. So like I said, the, um, the tech role series, that's kind of had a lot of um, people coming back and you see in a lot of uh, regular viewers, which was really nice. Um, and the co-working series attracted a lot of people who were in the same boat. So that was for people who were just really struggling through all the various lockdowns that we had and all the isolation. And they just wanted to get stuff done. But they, uh, although they had a lot of time, the mental health was suffering and there were a lot of people like that. So that's formed a really kind of tight knit group that is really trusts each other. And they know to come back at the same time every week. And, you know, they're going to see some friendly faces and they can share openly, you know, they can be vulnerable and stuff like that. Um, I think it's quite hard, especially in tech, because everybody's got different needs. So you want to offer variety and therefore you're not always going to get the same people coming back. And it is really hard to know what to offer people, because when you ask them, they don't necessarily tell you what they want. Um, but, yeah, definitely the series has worked for me especially over the past year, a bit of consistency, um, especially with the, uh, the Sunday 
the co-working sessions has been good. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. No worries. Pavel, anything that you find um, that works in, as far as keeping people the same, you know, kind of core people engaged? Well, we, mm, we started a little bit of like a instant messaging group. We use Slack and then we kind of chat there, which kind of works in between like the meetups so that people keep talking a bit. <laughs> um, but I, I was actually interested in more details, is that if I'm pronouncing it correctly? Like if you could mention more about what, what you did on those series, uh, because that's kind of good inspiration, I think if I could like copy some sort of thing you've done. <laughs> Which, what, what kind of um, things did you want to know? But you, you mentioned some co-working uh, that you've done and also the series about roles. Uh, so if you could just like high level cover what you've talked about or done. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll get my uh, my good friend Simon to drop some links in the chat while I'm talking and that's all right. Can you go on my blog, Simon, and pick off those too sorry <laughs> i'm gonna talk and he's gonna go otherwise i'm just gonna get distracted so um <laughs> cool. so for the co-working there was a lot of messaging at the time of oh you've got so much time because you don't have to get on the train and commute and stuff like that but i knew for a fact there were a lot of people and it affected women a lot i mean it affected men and women and um all kinds of people but uh, a lot of women are caregivers and stuff like that and a lot of women bear the, the childcare. so for them it wasn't true that they had a lot more time in fact they had less time because the children were at home and they're having to homeschool oh. and do all their stuff at the same time so i identified a need for some sort of supportive group for people to get stuff done and what i did was i combined um synchronous and asynchronous comms during this session started off as four hours a week and then we reduced it to three hours a week and then like we've done a bit of experimentation um and now it's three and a half hours but the first half an hour is social chat because we've all got to know each other mm. a bit more so what we do is we check in at the beginning and we're all on zoom and then anyone who wants to share what they're working on can um share and it doesn't have to be technical so we've got everybody from like they're um trying to brush up their skills or they're preparing for an interview or they need to do some cleaning or just anything they want to get done. And there's no judgment. And then we go off and work for about an hour. Um, and then we, during that time, um, we chat on Slack if we want to um, and share stuff on there. And then we check in about halfway through and then people can do demos. So one good example yeah. of somebody who wanted to make an app for about five years, she wanted to make an app where you could log like you'd drunk water or you'd gone for a walk, like it was called good behavior. Mm -hmm. You wanted to reward mm -hmm. yourself for doing this stuff. And she hadn't done this app. And then she started coming in January every week and she's got a Trello board for everything. And you can see very clearly the progress she's made since January. Nice. I think she's only missed about three or four sessions so it's really helped her to kind of have that right. I'm going to do this on Sunday mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. thing. So we do that and then uh, go off for another hour. And then at the end, we check in again and all the sharing is completely voluntary. So you can come and just watch or you can you can speak up. So nobody's forced to speak, mm -hmm. um, but people are very comfortable now because it's just so like friendly and it's the same faces all the time. So yeah, Simon, thank you for, um, for checking that out. Uh, sorry for, um, I'm getting confused now for posting my links in the uh, in the chat there. So check out that blog, it's outlined the whole methodology. But I also did a couple of conference talks um, that kind of describes it as well, if, they, if you prefer to watch a video. Um, and for the roles, what I did there was, I knew that there's kind of a lot of gatekeeping in tech, I think. And people think that if you're not a developer, then you're not really in tech. But there's a lot of roles in tech that are still very techy, but not necessarily coding. And then there are other roles in tech that are not really techy, but they're still in tech. So um, we wanted to kind of show people what they could do in tech um, if they are coders or if they're not coders or if they don't want to do coding anymore and stuff like they want to change, but also how to get into those roles. So we called it Get Into. Mm -hmm. So all my series started with Get. I don't know why. I think it started with get into, and then it was like the co-working was get on with it because I just said it jokingly one day and it kind of stuck. 
but it was, yeah, get into, so started off with get into web development. Then we had get into engineering management, get into product management, get into the app store. So somebody had done a side gig of, um, he does a lot of games. He makes a lot of little games. So one of his latest games was the game you can only play once. So you have to play it really well to get on the leaderboard and then you never have another chance again. So that was a really good one. So those ones are all on YouTube as well. So um, if you go to sues.deb mm-hmm. slash YouTube, you can check those out. Um, so yeah, it was all about just sort of the most common things that people kind of say, I'd really love to get into, but I don't know how. So we just picked off eight of them for the first series. Um, we had data engineering, data analysis, and then this series, we've had product design, um, so, something to do with data. We want to get a technical writer on as well. So yeah, it was just all those kind of roles that people might not necessarily know about. So you probably could find some that are related to um, DevOps for sure. Mm-hmm. There are probably loads you could do around DevOps, but um I think Simon's dropped the link to get into as well, or maybe not. I'll drop that in there. But um, yeah, so I outlined the methodology for how I chose the speakers and the format and stuff. So those get into's were really like a fireside chat because I decided it would be easier to do that than to get somebody to prepare a whole talk. Mm-hmm. It, was just, it was just easier to get the speakers on board. If I say to them, look, you don't have to prepare anything just turn up when I tell you to turn up and we'll just sit and have a chat. It was a lot easier. So um, that worked quite well. And then, um, so I very much kind of um, shaped how I wanted it to be. So I made sure I curated the questions and it's mostly questions from me. Um, And then we do ask the audience to submit questions as well. But what Mm -hmm. I find is a lot of people come on and then they ask, stuff like how do you have imposter syndrome it's like I really want to have a women in tech event where nobody mentions imposter syndrome (laughs) can we just like banish that term completely please because it actually doesn't exist if you want to talk to me about that afterwards I'll tell you why it doesn't exist but um yeah a lot of people say do you have imposter syndrome which okay is valid but I don't want to be asking every single interviewee about that I, I want to hear about your role and I don't really want to hear about what it's like to be a woman in tech either I just want to hear about what it's like to be a data scientist. So uh, let's kind of stop talking about this whole kind of woman thing and this imposter thing. So um, that's the way I personally do it. And yeah, um, Simon has very kindly dropped the links. Thanks for being my PA there, Simon. But yeah, happy to chat to you about that some more if you want or anything else you want to hear about. Perfect. Thank you so much for all the resources and stuff. No worries. Yeah, thank you both for sharing and great question. All right, cool. Well, I feel like we covered um, a lot of what I had jotted down as my notes. Um, Does anybody else have any other questions they want to talk about before we wrap it up? There are, I just wanted to make a suggestion. There are a lot of resources online. I know you said you help speakers out, but there's a lot of resources online for folks that want to get into speaking as well. Um, So I've been heavily involved in Global Diversity CFP Day. I don't know if any of you have heard of it, but the aim of it is to get underrepresented people um, speaking on conference stages because we don't have enough of them. It's it's all very samey. Um, so if you go on YouTube and look up Global Diversity CFP, there you'll find a load of resources about how to put, well, how to decide what to talk about, how to put together your bio, how to put together your abstract and, uh, and all of that. And I did run a mini one of those for um, Ladies of Code as well. And uh, we had four people that came through the whole se- the four week series. And yeah, you can find the videos of those talks on the YouTube channel that Simon um, dropped there. But yeah. There's, there's loads of um, resources for people who aren't sure if they can do it. Because I think there are loads of people who know stuff who would be great speakers at your meetup, but they just don't have the confidence. So if you can arm yourself with some resources to help them, um, it probably comes better from you because you're local rather than 
oh, let's go to GitLab and speak to like the big people up there. And it's a little bit scary. So if somebody local can kind of coach them through it, I think that really helps. Very cool. Thanks for that recommendation. All right, well, thanks everyone uh, for coming and spending time with us today. Um, thank you all for your contributions. I love these types of things that are more conversational and less kind of traditional presentation and then Q&A. So um, appreciate everybody's you know willingness to engage and share their own experiences. I feel like I learned a lot today um, and I'm leaving feeling inspired and that's a great feeling. Um, so yeah, thank you all. And um, yeah, let's keep in touch. And if anybody wants to um, you know learn more about starting a GitLab meetup, visit our about.gitlab.com slash community page and you'll find a link to the meetups page there. Um, and Jamie um, dropped her email address in the Zoom chat. So you can find that there too, if you want to reach out. Cool. Yeah, Thanks thank, for thank hosting. Thanks again for joining as well. Bye. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.